to awake. I declare anything that's, you know, and they just sang it again, anything that's asleep or anything that's uh, slumbering on the inside of us spiritually, I declare a supernatural awakening on the inside of us, whereby we can be in the flow of the Holy Spirit, whereby 
Nothing that God wants to do with us or in us or through us is diminished in any way, but that we are just tracking right with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And, uh, you know, God wants to do some stuff, and he's going to do some stuff. And, uh, you know, it's been on me all week just to, to, to recognize, and, and, you know, we're going through the, the Feast of the Trumpets, but to recognize how awesome our God is. Do you, do you have, do, do you contemplate how great and awesome our God is? Not just to figure him out, but to not to just see how he works or what his traits are, but are you aware how great your God is? That he, that he has placed everything. I love it in Job where he says, were you there? Were you there when I laid the line of the foundation of the earth? Were you there when I opened up the portals of the oceans and then I shut the gate? Were you there when I set all these things in place? And Job really didn't answer much. You know? <laughs> How great is our God? How awesome is our God? That he knows, the, he knows the numbers of stars. He put them in their place. He has named them. He knows the name of every one of the stars, and yet he knows you. And he knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows your thoughts before you think them. How great is our God? How awesome is our God? We serve the only true God, and our God is awesome. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look look at Psalm 149. And if you would just just stand up for a second while I read this. Just just so we can receive the awesomeness of our God. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of his saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful to their king. Let them praise his name with dance. Let them Sing praises to, to, to him with timbrel and harp, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people, and he will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and let the two-edged sword be in their hand. That two-edged sword is the word of God. Let that word, let that two-edged sword come out of your mouth into your atmosphere and begin to divide between what's truth and what's not truth. Let let that two-edged sword be in your hand. Let it come out of your mouth and begin to divide what's light and what's darkness, what's life and what's death in Jesus' powerful name. Amen? Because he has he has let the high praises of God be in their mouth, in your mouth. Let a two-edged sword be in your hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. Thus saith the Lord. Thus it doesn't matter what the enemy says to you. You say, thus saith the Lord. The enemy may say, it's time to quit. It's time to lie down. It's time to be sick. Thus saith the Lord, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Stronger is he that's in me than he that's in this world. I shall rule and reign with the Lord forever. Hallelujah. To execute on them the written judgment, this honor have all his saints. We have this honor to give the high praises to God because he is the awesome God. He is our creator God. And also, he is the one who has put the two-edged sword in our hand. He's put it in our heart. He's put it in our mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This honor has all his saints. Praise the Lord. Just say that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Have a seat. Praise God. He is great. He is mighty. Amen. One of the things I have to just continually remind myself of is to stay in the now. Stay in the now. You know, I really don't have an issue uh, with the past so much because I understand the power of the blood of Jesus. I understand that I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I understand, and I have a complete understanding, and I have faith in the blood of that everything, every wretched thing that I ever did has been washed clean. It's erased. It's been cast into the bottomless sea. It's in the bottom of the ocean. It's as far from me as the east is from the west. I do have a working knowledge of that, 
and I don't really go back and 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 hash over things in the past. And they say, "Well, gosh, you should. You were so, you were so bad. Now the blood of Jesus has cleansed me from all unrighteousness." And so I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with going back. But the, but the issue with me is I always look forward and I, and I begin to, uh, my issues are, are future-oriented, not, not past-oriented. I understand the power of the blood, but, but where unbelief and doubt and fear, if they ever come in on me, it's a future issue. It's not a, it's not a past issue. And, and the Lord is saying, stay in the now. You stay in the now. I will take care of your future. As I have dealt with your past, I also will deal with your future. And as I have erased the mistakes and the sins and the wretched things you did in the past, I, if you stay in the now, I will take care of the now. I will take care of you right now. You resist the temptation to go into the future. And that doesn't mean that we don't dream, and that's, that doesn't mean that we don't plan. That doesn't mean that we don't have a hope in the future. We do have a hope in a future, and a hope is always in the future. But he said, do not, do not look and begin to uh, vex yourself over uh, scenarios that you think might happen because I'll, I'm with you now, and I'll be with you now for always. We are always in the eternally now. Do you believe that? We are now. God is now. Do you believe that God is now? He said, I am the great I am. I am the great I am. And when I get in trouble is, uh, I, get, I say, yeah, but, but Lord, what about, I, I know you're the great I am right now, but I'm thinking about what if this happens in the, sometime in the future. And he says, you come back here and I will, I will meet your need today. I will meet your need today. Amen. So look at, uh, look at Matthew 6, 34. And this is the Lord talking. And he says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The Lord says, I'll always see you through today. I will always be sufficient today. I will always be able to keep you in perfect peace and perfect grace today. If you stay in today, I'm in today, and I'll tell you, I will be with you from the, from the beginning until the end. I'm with you all the time, and no matter what you run into I will be with you now. Don't go to the past. Don't go to the future. Don't anticipate problems or things that you think you cannot handle. For when you get there, I will be there, and you will have grace sufficient for the day. I mean, today I've got enough of everything. Today I've got a, I've got a home. I've got transportation. I've got clothing. I've got a wife, I've got great children, I've got, I've got everything I need. Today, I got more than enough. Do you have enough right now? Are you okay right now? Today I'm okay. Are you okay? And see, we're always okay. It's when we start getting out away from the Lord and we start saying, yeah, but what about when, uh, what about when, and the Lord said, no, 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 no. Let me read it. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is this trouble. Lord, you are sufficient. You are, you are my need meter. And, I, and my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory in Christ. Does God want to exalt you? Yes. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He will exalt you. Does God want you to do well? You will do well. He is your provider. He is Jehovah Jaira, he will provide. I remember I used, before I was a Christian, uh, junior high, high school, I'd lay in bed every night. I so loved my grandpa because he was kind of my stand-in dad. And I'd always lay every night I'd worry about him dying. And I said, Lord, don't let him die. Lord, don't. And even though I was not saved, I always talked to God. And I always believed Jesus was Lord. I just never did seal the deal. Because I said, well, you know, I might have to stop some things I really enjoy. 
And so I never did do that. I just, we just had conversations, and the Lord would hear me. I said, Lord, don't let him die. But the day he died, the Lord was there, and I was okay. It was okay. Yeah, I, I missed him, but I'll tell you, and I've told you before, we were all around his bed, and he said, believe in God. He's taking these deep breaths, and you're saying, I don't think he's going to take another deep breath. And then he says, get all the kids, get all the grandkids around here. Okay, believe in God. He takes one more breath, and his spirit leaves. I'm okay. I was okay. That which I feared for years, that which really drove me into drug abuse, because I said, I cannot stand the thought of separation from this guy. Really, it, it really drove me into drug abuse, because I thought, I don't like to think about stuff like this. And this is like a living hell to think about how am I going to live without this guy being around. Well, you know, when you, when you start doing drugs, your heart gets so hard you don't love anybody. And so, you know, it was already done. But by that time, the Lord was starting to deal with me already about coming into him, coming back to him, coming to him really for the first time. And so on that day, the Lord gave me grace sufficient for that. And now I know, hey, you know, so... Whenever I die, I'm going to be with my grandfather, and we're going to, you know, we're going to enjoy each other's presence forever, world without end. And so it's an incredible thing. But I'm just saying, if you can stay in the now, the Lord, no matter what your fear is, no matter what the enemy tries to hang over you to cause you to have distress and, and lack of peace, the Lord says, if you stay in me, I mean, first of all, you got to know him to stay in him. I couldn't have the peace of God because I never did say, God, I believe you're the Savior of the world, and save me. I'm going to serve you. You are an awesome God, and I don't want to figure out. I just want to love you. I want to serve you, and I want to obey you. And see, I wasn't willing to do that. But once, but no matter what your fear is, if you stay in today, if you stay in the now, God says, I'll see you through. I will be with you. And that which you think you cannot handle, you will handle. How many have experienced that? That's something that you thought, my God, I can never handle this. But when this happened, God was with you and you did handle it. Has anybody ever experienced that? That's God. That's the grace of God. That's the favor of God. And God says, I'll never let you down. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so many of us, you know, the last great test of faith is when we cross over, when we leave time and we make this uh, this transition into eternity, that's the last great test of faith. And you know, I tell you what, God will be with you then too. When you say, my God, I'm afraid to die. Well, don't be afraid to die because Jesus has destroyed death by death. And he said, death cannot touch you because I took the full bore. I took the full blow of death and death cannot touch you. The shadow might pass over you, but the death cannot touch you because yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, Jesus Christ has destroyed the power of death against us who believe. And so we're not afraid to live and we're not afraid to die. Most people are not afraid to die, but I pray God would give us the grace to stay in today where we're not afraid to live. Amen? I pray that the things that want to hang over us and torment us, I pray we stay in today. And you know what? God's grace is sufficient today. Sufficient unto the day. Lord, let me stay in the now. Let me stay today. Let me enjoy my day. You know, a lot of times, the things that, that we worry about steal the things that really are on your table already. I've got, a, I've got a faithful, fantastic wife. I've got so many things I'm thankful for. I've got, look, I've got good health. I've got good health. And you know, sometimes the enemy will so torment you with the one thing that you think's not right, that you almost uh, put the emphasis on that and, and, and the things that we ought to really be grateful and thankful for, we have almost become uh, secondary. Does that make sense? I mean, the things we ought to really say, God, I thank you. I thank you for, I thank you for my peaceful home. I thank you for my, I thank you for my good wife. I thank you for my health. I thank you for my Boston Terrier, Lord. I, I thank you for these things. And, and, and you know, God is, uh, and if you don't watch it, you'll, you'll, you'll accentuate the negative, and it will dominate your life. 
And I pray God does a shift on the inside of us. If you stay in today, then you're grateful for the things that God has already put on your table. And, and so you concentrate on that and you say, praise God. Praise God. Well, what about that? What about this eventuality that, that someday is going to happen? I'm staying in today. And if, if that eventuality happens somewhere in the future, I'll have the grace to deal with it. Sufficient to today. God's always sufficient. God, you're sufficient today. You know, if, if, we, if we dropped over to today, you know, we, we had enough money. We had enough. We have enough every. We got more than enough everything. Amen? Praise the Lord. And then, you know, and the enemy will try to get you to, to, to fear instead of trust. Look over at 2 Kings. He does the same thing all the time. He has not changed. The enemy's a liar and a cheat. He, he does the same things. He tries to get you to fear and doubt rather than trust God. And so look at uh, 2 Kings 18, 26. I may have Greg come and read this. Are you there? 2 Kings 18, 26. Then, now Assyria is coming against Judah, and they're trying to get Hezekiah and all of the armies to fear the Syrian army because they're, they're powerful. And they're trying to get them to, to doubt whether God will come through. And so uh, Eliakim, the son of Jephiah, and Sibna, and Joah said to Rabshakeh, and, and now Re Rabshakeh is, he's, he's like the governor, he's from, uh, he's from Syria, and he's coming, and he's, put, he's coming for the sole purpose to put down. And, you know, there's a, Rabshakeh's spirit, and it's always to cause you to doubt God. And so, and so they said, so, so Rabshakeh, he came, but he's speaking in Hebrew. So that all the servants of Judah can, he, can hear in their own language these words of doubt. The enemy knows how to speak to you in such a way that he can put fear and doubt in you. He knows your he knows your cadence. He knows, he knows how to speak to you in such a way that, that he can that, that you go, you know, I don't know if that's a voice of God or if that's a voice of reason. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a voice of reason. We still prefer the voice of God. Amen? Please speak to your servants in Aramaic. For we understand that. Don't speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But Rabshakeh said to them, has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words and not to them, to the men who sit on the wall, who eat and drink their own waste with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and he called out with a loud voice in Hebrew and he spoke saying, hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you for he shall not be able to deliver you from his hand, nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, the Lord will surely deliver us. This city shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. That's what the enemy does. <laughs> Do not trust in the Lord. That is that Rabshakeh spirit. Do not trust in the Lord. I, I pray that spirit is broken. I pray as we cry out for awakening today, we recognize the enemy's voices to us saying, do not trust God in this one. And then we said, no, I will trust the words of Hezekiah. I'll trust the words of the, of, of the men of God, and I trust God to deliver me. Amen? Do you believe that? Okay, so look at 2 Kings 19, 5 and 7. Because, look, we're in grace. Amen? We're in, it's the favor of God on us. God's favor has been poured out in the, in the spirit of Christ Jesus. And we are favored by God. When we 
When we say, Jesus, you are my Lord, God says, I favor you. My favor is upon you. doesn't matter who sends word curses against you. My favor is upon you. My favor is upon you. doesn't matter what, what has happened through the word curses. You stay in faith. My favor is upon you. You'll see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? Okay, so 2 Kings 19.5. And so the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Isaiah is the prophet. And I, you listen, you need, to, you, need, you need to ask God to quicken your ears so you can hear the prophetic word because we need to hear the prophetic word. Because the prophetic word, God does nothing unless he exposes it to his prophet. And you need, to, you need to have that input into your life where you hear the prophetic word of God so that you can say, here's what God is saying. Here's what the enemy's saying. Here's what God's saying. So these men of Hezekiah, they come to Isaiah. And Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid of the words which you have heard, which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, this thing is not about us. This thing is about the Lord. This thing is not about you. This thing is about the Lord. You've been anointed with the Spirit of God. You have been anointed with the presence of God. And it's not about you. It's about your God. And so your God will protect you. Amen? We just stand and say, I don't know anything, but I know one thing. My Lord has risen up from the dead, and he has destroyed the powers of darkness against me and against his people. I am the body of Christ. Do not be afraid of the words which you've heard. They blaspheme me. Surely I will send a spirit upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. The Lord says, listen, I know what's going on. I've got a spirit too, and they can send those curses against you, but I can send a blessing upon you, and when I send a blessing upon you, I'm going to send your enemies packing in Jesus' Come awake, come and rise up from the grave.